Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Kim. And I'm Zach. And we're from Hungerford Technologies. All right, another Wednesday, another time to get to hang out with Kim. I'm excited. If you already know, every Wednesday we go live um, because every Wednesday we need to tell people about WebEx. WebEx Wednesdays is what we do. Um, because right now every organization has a need to host virtual meetings, virtual events, virtual groups, anything like that. Um, if you've been with us for the past couple of weeks, you've noticed that we're doing troubleshooting. This week, we are doing troubleshooting video. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are excited for this one because video and audio seem to be some of the major issues with people when they first get into WebEx um, or I guess any virtual software, I, uh, virtual meeting software, honestly. So let's just dive right to it. Let's talk about the camera. We have two different types of cameras normally. Um, if you're using uh, web-based or software-based software, software-based software, come on, Zach. Um, you have the built-in one on your laptop. If you have a desktop, you don't have a built-in one, so you buy one. You buy a camera, a webcam that can just sit on top of your monitor. Um, the main difference in all of this is your laptop camera will be worse than the camera you buy externally. It just will be. True. If you get a laptop camera that's really good, kudos to you. I'm impressed. Please send me at zgoins at hungerford.tech what laptop you have because I'm very curious. Because um, I will bet 9.9 .9 times out of 10, a, like, a wi like a wired camera will do better than a laptop camera. Um, I have one. Kim has one. I can show you what it looks like, but I'm not going to. What a laptop camera looks like, it just looks bad. It's grainy. It doesn't pick up light very well. Um, so let's kind of cover a couple different topics. Um, and then what we'll do is we will talk to you about how to create a better video experience. So as always, user error does come into play when you're trying to work with a camera. Um, it might be open in another program. Most built-in cameras or wired cameras can only be used for one program. So if I have WebEx meetings open and I'm in a meeting with a client and Kim's like, hey, I need you to chat in WebEx Teams, it won't work. I won't mm -hmm. be able to have a camera on in two different places at once. I will only be able to have it on one. That's or if that, you're trying to join the meeting twice by accident, like you've yeah. clicked the link to open it, it's like your camera is being used in another application. And you're like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's well, not. you clicked it twice. It's got yeah. two windows open to have you join it. So yep. user error. <laughs> or you might not be connected to the right cam connected to the right camera at all. You might be connected to the camera that you have built on your laptop. You might be connected to um, a fake camera that you might have been trying to virtualize or something like that. So you need to slow yourself down, figure out if the camera that you're connected to is actually the right camera, um, or if you are just using a rogue camera that you might not know about. Second thing, computer settings. We're just going to talk about permissions really quickly. You need to approve WebEx. Um, to do those things. On Windows, it's a lot easier to approve the camera to be used because it's usually built right into the download feature. You download WebEx meetings, you download WebEx Teams, it automatically grants access to the video to work, automatically. You might need to go into permissions on your PC to get that to work correctly, but I haven't really worked with anybody that has to do that. On a Mac, on the other hand, you do need to do that. If you want a guide to learn how to do that, you can email me at zgoins at hungerford.tech or reach out to us at info at hungerford.tech because it is different from Catalina onward. Um, that's just something to know. It's just something to be aware about, but it is different on Macs. Um, internet connection is another thing. Kim's getting fiber. I'm still jealous if you've been listening to the past episodes, but internet connection can cause your video to go bad. This is the same with your computer settings. If your CPU is running too high, if you have a lot of apps open, it will cause it not to work correctly. Video and audio take a lot of processing power. Um, same for internet. It takes a lot of bandwidth to run video across the internet. So if worse comes to worse and you're in a meeting and audio is top tier important, you need to talk to Kim, you need to talk to your boss. Turning your video off will get you a better audio experience. Is or turn it off, connect to your phone, and then turn it back on. Yeah, but that's actually a really good point. If you're not kicked out of the meeting, if your internet's really spotty, you can you know, turn your video off, figure out another audio connection, and then try and connect again. 
that's actually a really good point. If you want to know how to do that, or if you have questions about that, listen to our previous episode about audio, and we can kind of fill you in. But Kim has a great point. That is actually really true. Um, finally, let's get to the meat and potatoes of everything. Uh, I will turn off my light really quick because I want you to see what I'm working with. This is my office. The, uh, the lighting is great. Uh, you can see that I am reflecting off of my monitors. You can see that my camera, even though it is a wired camera, just isn't necessarily doing the great job. Uh, so how do we go from this to making it just a little bit better? Um, Kim had it in our notes how to take your video from drab to fab. I'm not that cool. So I'm just going to say, how do you make your video look not like bad or like crap if you really want to get to it? Um, <laughs> we have invested a little bit into what we use. That being said, we are on meetings every single day. We are recording things, we're live streaming things, we're meeting with clients. Um, it is necessary to have what we have at our disposal. Uh, for this setup, I have a Logitech camera. I'm pretty sure Kim has a Logitech camera. Mm -hmm. And we have ring lights, just easy ones, bought off of Amazon. Um, they weren't very expensive at all, but what you get is, and if you want to switch over to my screen really quick, Ryan, uh, just something like this. A little ring light that can sit on your desk or that can sit behind your desk um, will dramatically increase what you look like and what people perceive of your video. If people see that you're lit up, if people see that they can see you, um, they feel like they want to be um, like closer to you, they want to talk to you more, they want to be around you. Um, I will show you the webcam that we use as well, at least what I use. I use one of these. Um, bought it a while ago, love it. It gets great quality. It's exactly what I need. Why you need these things and why you need to invest into these things is because of the quality. Um, quality helps you make better connections with your clients. Quality helps you make better connections with your coworkers. And let's be honest, you just look better. Um, if you're using the integrated laptop camera, you're, it's not going to look good. It's going to be grainy. It's going to be small. You're not going to see everything. There are going to be things missing. It's just not going to be that great. If you invest in these things, one, they're going to last for a while. You're not moving it. You're not ripping it out. You're not changing things. They sit on your desk. Um, they sit there, and they help your video experience be better. The other thing is your background. So, Ryan, if you want to pull us back full screen, um, if you look at Kim's background, let's just check it out really quick. She's at home. She's in her living room, I'm assuming. Um, mm -hmm. Alexa, turn on the living room lamp. Oh, wow. Okay. Flexing over here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So the way that she has her background set up is actually super nice. Like it's, it's inviting. It's warm. It looks really nice and cozy. I'm kind of jealous. If but... you know me, you know my husband's clean. And <laughs> that is why our house looks so yeah. cool. I am not at home where I'm in my basement normally with just a wall. I'm here in the office and we're busy. It's We work in an IT office. We're very busy. So you see a bunch of wires over here. I have this whiteboard here to try and block things that are behind me because we're, we're, we're just busy. We're in an office. Um, you kind of see my things over here. Some people might look at this. Some you can people change might your lighting things. too. You can also change your lighting with the lights we have. Some people might look at these things and say, Zach, Too you're much. a slob. Why is it so messy? I'm not really interested in what you have going on. They might look at Kim's setup and say, wow, look at that. That's really professional. You look like you're put together. You got a nice microphone. You got a nice camera, lighting. Look at that house. That makes a difference. People notice these things. You know, People are realizing, hey, who am I talking to? Hey, what is going on in the background? You see cars behind me. Earlier, when I was working, the sun was setting because we live in Michigan and it's five o'clock and it's already getting dark. Yeah, sad, sad story. If you've seen a few of them, sometimes you'll see my cat. He runs by. That's true. Oscar Meow walks appearance. around. But make sure your background is good. You know, that's not necessarily part of the video experience that you have on your computer, but it makes for a better video experience that your people you see. Don't you can use a virtual background, but just make sure that you test it Damn. out before because some people's computers have problems with the CPU usage. So yep. Zach, take it away. Yeah, I don't know if I can do oh, it. I don't on know here. if you can do it on here. No, it's okay. I will do it through I think I can actually. So I have a piece of software. Um 
that might let me do it. We'll see here in a second. But in WebEx meetings, you are able to kind of change the background if you want to do so. Um, to change the background in WebEx meetings, you go up to the top. I think it's under audio and video. And you're able to just change what the background looks like. So it could be blurred. Um, it could be, um, I can't do it on the software. That's fine. Um, it could be blurred. You can set up something that you want as your background. Um, you can set it up to make it look like an office if you want to. Um, I've seen a lot of people use the blur method because like in my scenario, I don't really care. But if I have to talk to somebody who's important or if I don't want it to look like a complete slop, I'll just blur my background. You won't see any of the wires over here. This will all be covered up and you won't see anybody walking around. Um, so that's something you can do in WebEx meetings um, and WebEx teams as well. Um, and it also is pretty secure. You know, it keeps everything safe. You don't have to worry about any of your video being sent somewhere else. It keeps everything right there. Um, so kind of to wrap up what we've been talking about, let's go over the really quick topics. User errors do happen in video. Make sure your video is connected to the right feed. Um, computer settings, if your CPU is too high, video will not work. You will freeze, you'll look like a mummy, or you'll look like you're trying to pull a joke on somebody and just like freeze like that. And then people will screen capture you and they'll spread it to your coworkers. Uh, internet connection, make sure you have a hardwire if you don't know about hardwire connection by now. We have not done our due diligence because we talk about that a lot. And then finally, invest in your setup. Uh, grab a nice camera, grab a nice ring light. Um, invest in the things that will make your video better and what will make people stand out a little bit more. Um, Kim, do you have anything else? No, I think that's good. Just make sure that you have a setup that works for you, that fits yeah. your budget. You know, there are all different kinds of cameras there. You know, even a ring light makes a huge difference in your uh, built-in camera. So just figure out kind of a price point that works for you. Uh, I know that we're going through COVID right now. Yeah. I don't think video meetings are going anyplace anytime soon. I think that the future's here. It makes it easy to talk and communicate and collaborate. The more you can see people and actually see their face, the easier it is to understand their expressions, to you know yeah. actually have a real conversation. If my face was all pixely and you couldn't see me, it kind of can become a distraction, so. Yeah, exactly, Kim nailed it. As always, if you're looking for a full feature free trial of WebEx, or if you're a current customer, or I know, three ORs. If you want a training for your organization or yourself, we can do those things. Email us, reach out to us at info at hungerford.tech or reach out to us on our website, hungerford.tech. We'll be continuing this series. We've got a couple other things to troubleshoot because you guys have questions and we have answers. So as always, thanks for joining us. I'm Zach. I went the wrong way. That's Kim. Thanks Bye, for guys. hanging out. See you later. <laughs>